The Paul W. Smith Show, News Talk 760, WJR. Good Monday morning to you. Hope you had a great weekend and you're raring to go for the new week, as we are. It is Monday, March 7th, the 66th day of 2022. There are 299 days left in the year. Make each and every day count. Each day is a gift. We've got the team, the team, the team together, our WJR senior news analyst, Fox News correspondents and WJR contributors, best guests, and you, thank goodness. We do it all for you, and you are the most important part of the best and brightest audience in all of radio. Along my side, Sean Belegian and Ann Thomas, our executive producer and assistant to program director as we uh, get underway for a brand new week and certainly it is good to be back here on the air well it's great to have you back paul you had kind of a rough week last week it was a rough week and you know i signed off from the uh, very successful salvation army radiothon congratulations and a belated thank you to everybody who helped out and made it successful all of the wjr employees from the ones you hear on the air to the ones behind the scenes all the salvation army people all the other volunteers and of course our listeners that always being the most philanthropic most generous listeners in all of radio stepped up and did a great job and at the end of the program i said almost mysteriously i'm gonna go i'm gonna be off monday and i'm gonna go visit dick purton well the fact of the matter is i was taking sophie to florida for her spring break and then I was going to try to look up Dick and visit with him because he's in Florida all the time, as he did the, the, the broadcast, the radiothon from Florida. And then I was going to do my show from Florida. I wasn't going to be off this last week at all. Unfortunately, as I arrived almost immediately in Florida, I got word that my mother, Sweet Marie, had fallen in, uh, in her special care that she had. And she was closer to my sister because my sister could be there. Allison Avent, my sister, is a vice president, chief operating officer at McLaren St. Luke's. So she wanted her in the area there. So she was in an assisted living place. And then they said she needed memory care, which is, I guess, what they call nursing homes now. So she went into the ups, up scale or more concentrated care. And then she fell. And she didn't fall once, she fell twice. And the second time she fell, she broke her leg below her knee. It was not good. It was not good at all. I said, well, at least she didn't break her hip. And they said, it's worse than breaking your hip. Mm. Be that as it may, they said they couldn't do anything for her. So she went into hospice. I never heard of Ebide Hospice. It actually has a Detroit connection. He was a, he was a businessman, I think with Guardian Glass, I I think he had a big connection there, but I, I can't say for sure. I do want to look it up, but I will say that this Ebide Hospice alongside Flower Hospital is magnificent, and unfortunately, I learned that hospice is every bit as important and as good as I've always heard it was, but never had to experience it myself. They are angels helping with the passageway of a loved one, and and helping the family deal with that. So I'm glad I got there early. I came right back from Florida and was with my mother the beginning of the week when she could know that I was there. But as the week went on, it started getting worse. She was, when I got there, in the hospital for the broken leg, but they said they couldn't do anything, and she was in a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to see a loved one. in a lot of pain. So, at hospice, they know a thing or two about pain and how to alleviate that pain, and they did. And Allison and I were along her bedside for 15 hours a day, 15, sometimes 17 hours a day, holding her hand and talking to her. And we kept thinking, well, she's going to go today, and she didn't. And my feeling is that once you make it to 96, it's because you really want to live. You have to really want to live to make it to 96. <laughs> and sweet Marie really wanted to live. And so the nurses told me, then Anne told me, then five other people told me, well, she's never going to die while you're there, Paul. 
No mother wants to die in front of their children. And didn't you tell me mm-hmm, something like yeah. that? Your own story. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's a thing, Paul. So this Saturday, after being there unexpectedly like five days, I didn't pack to be there five days. I mean, I didn't have anything. I was wearing the same clothes and everything. I finally said, I got to go home and get some more stuff. And Allison said, I'm going to go over to my daughter Caitlin's and have dinner because mom looks like she's the same she's looked the last few days. So sure enough, I arrive back home in Gross Point on Saturday. Allison sits down for dinner at her daughter Caitlin's, and we get the call that Mother Sweet Marie finally let go. So I wrote my column today while she was still very much alive. Well, not very much alive, but alive. So I wrote the column, and they put the headline, We Know the End of My Mother's Story. It just hadn't happened yet when I wrote the column, because I had to write it Thursday. But indeed, she did pass away Saturday. And I cannot thank all of my WJR family, from our boss, Steve Finitari, and our other boss, Mike Wheeler, and and to you, Ann, and to, and Sean, and everybody who reached out, and, uh, Marie did. I mean, everybody did, and then our listeners reached out as well, and uh, and I appreciate that. And I think it was Marie who said, "Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter that you know it's coming. It's hard to lose a parent." And and that is the truth. Well, Paul, your mom was part of our WJR family too. I mean, she was on the air with us, and we talked about her all the time. And always made it to the. She was a wonderful, sweet, sweet woman. She was indeed, always supportive of her son. Yes, her little boy who could do no wrong. No matter, no matter how many wrongs I might have done over my many years of living, but. Everybody can relate to that about their mother. Yes, they don't make them any better than your mom. Well, that's. She was I, I hope everybody feels that way about their moms. But anyway, I wanted to mention it. I didn't want. I didn't want you to think I just disappeared last week. Uh, believe me, it wasn't a vacation, and I wasn't planning on being off the air. But I really felt I had to be by her side, and I'll never regret that I was. No, that's right. You can never, ever, ever regret what you did last week. It was awesome, Paul. All righty, but we're back to work. She was a showbiz mom. (laughs) She and my dad started the Monroe Community Players almost 100 years ago, like WJR Radio, only about 75 years ago, I guess. And uh, she knew that the show must go on. And so it shall.